Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to go through how to prepare files for printing. So like I have just said, we're gonna look at how to prep files for print and we're actually gonna order a print today whilst we're recording this because I think it is really useful to basically just see the end to end instead of pretending that we're pretending. So we're actually going to order this particular file that you guys can see on the screen right now. So this is at the kind of end of the editing stage. I've kind of done my normal workflow and it's still a large document format. It's still in uh, 330 ppi and it is in Profoto RGB 16 bit. So we can't send that to print <laughs> at all. So first things first guys is to go ahead and look at your print house. So let's go and have a look at mine. Okie doke. So uh, this is my print lab, obviously Digital Lab, love Digital Lab. We're gonna order a fine art print from Digital Lab. So what you need to go ahead and do is look at what your print house uses. And usually this is in the kind of footer area or in the FAQ. So let's go ahead and try and find the print guidance. Okay, so down in the footer was the file setup link, which basically goes through what we want to print in the simplest way. So what we're looking at doing is uh, just looking at what we need to upload. So Digital Lab need to have sent over JPEG file. The best results we need to get sRGB color space. They should be in 8-bit mode. And so realistically, we also need to have it exported at 300 pixels per inch. And essentially that's just kind of what we need to do, which is absolutely fine, no problem at all. So we know that we are in the wrong color space, we are in the wrong bit depth, and we are we could tweak the resolution. First steps first is to basically prep this for print. Now, the best way to go here is to just check your highlights and your shadow clipping because I think that's so important. So we'll just pop another levels adjustment layer on there and what we want to look at is when we hold down Alt or Option and click on one of the arrows, does anything show up? So with the blacks arrow, no, there is no black clipping. And with the whites arrow, there is a tiny bit of clipping and it's in the eye, so I'm okay with that. That means that my file is exposed well. If there was a million miles from the last point that you can see, so say for example, the point on this side was like here, then your image is underexposed, so close the gap to ensure that the exposure is correct. So when you've done that, you can go ahead and flatten your image. So right click, flatten image. With a flattened image, then in my personal workflow, I go image mode, eight bits, and then I go edit, convert to profile, sRGB. Okay, so when I've done that, my image is now da, 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 in Adobe sRGB, eight bit, and the resolution will be absolutely fine. Now I'm gonna print a fine art print and I know that my fine art paper, because test prints are good guys, I know that my fine art paper will lift the shadows a bit. I'm fine with that, but the aspect ratio that I want to be using is actually a 12 by eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in here 12 by eight, which switches it to the correct aspect ratio. And then I wanna just crop appropriately to a point that I'm happy with which is about there to be honest with you and lock that in. So with that now done, I'm then gonna save it ready for print. So it's gonna be a file, save as. So you can always make a new folder called a print ready if you want to. And then we need to change the file format into JPEG. With that saving through as a JPEG, we need to make sure that we can embed the color profile here. So we're gonna click save. And then within the JPEG options window, we want to make sure that the quality is at the highest. The format option is baseline standard, and that's gonna give us the biggest file size. So you can go ahead and click OK on there. One thing that I personally tend to do is I actually resize my files to the correct size. So although that JPEG will work absolutely fine, I usually do 
do image, image size, and then within image size, I change where it says pixels to inches, and then I change my width and height to the print size. So in this case, it's 12 inches wide by eight inches high. Um, and if you want to resample, then that's fine. It's up to you to whether you choose automatic or one of the other options, and then click OK. That now is the actual size that that's gonna print. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save again in the same folder and just add 12 by eight to the end of the file name. And then I'm gonna click save, all the same, and then that is done. So to order our print, we need to go ahead and get the product ready. So we're gonna go for a fine art print. We are gonna go for an Amiga rag. So my Amiga rags are, I want a 12 by eight Amiga rag, which is just here. So I'm gonna click on there and then I'm gonna go ahead to continue. I'm gonna add file and I'm gonna go ahead and choose my print ready 12 by eight file and click open. With that file there, I'm gonna start the upload process. That will upload, should be absolutely fine. And with that done, we then need to just double check everything's fine. So the red box is the crop size there, the size of the prints there, how many copies we've got is there, the finish is there, but you could choose any of the options there. I just personally use Amiga Rag because I adore it. That was what I print my award images on and I just think it's beautiful, works well with my style. So with that done, we're then gonna proceed to check out and buy the item. So that's it guys, the order is placed. And that is pretty much exactly how to order prints in my personal <laughs> workflow. That is the prep work that I do. I make sure that the size is correct. I make sure that the bit depth is correct, that the color profile is correct, that there are not clipped highlights and clipped shadows, that the exposure is correct, and of course, make sure that the sharpness and the focal point is fine. But other than that, really, I don't do anything different. And this is the exact same workflow that I use to uh, send files for wall art and all sorts of other stuff. The only difference is in my fine art float frame which is a beautiful wall art piece that has layers of kind of varnish applied to it. So it darkens and adds contrast. So in those situations, I usually go ahead and add a brightness contrast adjustment layer and increase the brightness by about 10 and decrease the contrast by about 10. Then when it comes to me, it ends up being exactly the same as that and not super dark or super high contrast. But that is literally the only other thing. If there's one thing that I I can suggest to you guys is to do test prints and do as many test prints as you need to do to the point where you can trust your settings and when you've got that done everything else will be absolutely fine and if you haven't already please remember to press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon the bell icon will help you out it'll give you a notification every single time i upload a video i upload every week and sometimes more than that if i feel like it i hope this video was helpful for you and if it was please let me know i will see you all again really 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 soon.